I'm preparing my best, my 100% for every single defense what I have. Wow! There we go! Valentina Shevchenko takes on another hungry challenger who's eager to take her throne, Brazilian prospect Tyler Santos. According to the odds, Santos is Shevchenko's second toughest title defense, only after Jessica Andrade. Jessica, she has very explosive nature. Shevchenko is looking to wrap up her seventh title defense, and Santos is determined to prevent that from happening. This is definitely a matchup to look forward to, and we here at Athlete Central are here to tell you everything you need to know about it in this ultimate fight breakdown. Form. Let's start off with the defending champion Bullet Valentina Shevchenko. After capturing the vacant flyweight title against former strawweight champ Joanna Yatzechek, Valentina Bullet Shevchenko. Shevchenko became a star in her first title defense against Jessica I. The bullet dominated the first round and then landed a highlight reel knockout after head kicking I into oblivion. That head kick KO is going to be played in almost every UFC promo package. That's just how good it was. When she loaded up, she's thinking body and shin, to, shin the to the dome. Then came a fight against Liz Carmouche, a fighter who had defeated her in her early career back in 2010. Despite this loss, Shevchenko was still a huge minus 1100 favorite in the fight. And for good reason. Shevchenko won every single round, and despite the fact that there wasn't a lot of action in the fight, she showed her dominance and bested Carmouche in every single department. Her next fight was against Caitlin Chukagian, another bout where she was the massive betting favorite. It went a lot like most of her fights usually do. She beat Chukagian from bell to bell, and in the third round, after securing a takedown, she landed some nice ground and pound from the most dominant position in MMA, the crucifix, and got the finish. Her bout against Jennifer Maya showed just how highly fans and pundits rate her. Shevchenko lost one round in that fight, and everyone was losing their minds over it. Despite the minor setback, Shevchenko convincingly won all the other rounds and secured yet another solid victory. Jessica Andrade was believed to be the toughest challenge for Shevchenko after moving up from 115. She was, after all, the former strawweight queen. Shevchenko used her striking and grappling to put all doubt to bed and show that she is on another level to Andrade. In the second round, she yet again secured the crucifix position, and after hammering some elbows, the referee was forced to stop the fight. That's it. And still, the UFC flyweight wow. champion. Her last title defense came against Lauren Murphy. The bullet was an astounding minus 1600 favorite, and she definitely showed why in that fight. Murphy didn't even look like she belonged in there with Shevchenko. The bullet striking was crisper. She had the superior grappling and overall bested Murphy in every single department before getting the finish in the fourth round after some vicious ground and pound. Let's get to the challenger now, Tyler Santos. Santos lost a split decision to Mara Barella on her UFC debut, but has since bounced back with four straight victories to get herself a title fight. The first win on that streak was against Molly Meatball McCann. Santos beat the Brit after a 15-minute high-class performance. She won all three rounds, and some pundits even scored the last round as a 10-8 for Santos. Her next fight was against Jillian Robertson, a real Brazilian jiu-jitsu wizard. In the first round, Santos showed off her impressive grappling defense when Robertson pulled guard and went for an arm bar. Tyler remained patient and slowly worked her way out of the attempt, never being in real danger. She controlled Robertson for the rest of the round. The second round was more of Santos controlling and actually throwing up submissions of her own, taking Jillian down and landing some effective ground and pound. In the third round, Santos was yet again on top for the majority of the round and survived a guillotine and a leg lock. In her next fight against fan favorite Roxanne Mataferi, yet again, there was a lot of grappling, and I mean a lot. Santos took Roxanne down twice after a lot of clinch work, but Mataferi got up eventually after getting controlled for a while. In the second round, Santos dominated after landing a big right hand and controlling Mataferi on the mat for the rest of the round. The jab and then just boom, right hand over the top. The third round was more of the same. Tyler landed a big shot that rocked Roxy and controlled her on the ground for the majority of the round to get a unanimous decision victory. 
Santos's last fight was against Joanne Wood, her biggest test so far, someone with high level Muay Thai striking, kind of like Valentina but very inferior. Santos was absorbing leg kicks at first but then got the rhythm and managed to rock Wood three times in that first round. After the last knockdown, she followed Wood down onto the canvas and secured a rear naked choke victory in the first round. Attributes. The fighters are at different stages of their careers. Shevchenko was at the peak, defending her belt and in her absolute prime at 34 years old, while Tyla Santos is looking to get into the best years of her career at 28 years old. In terms of measurements, the fighters are quite similar, but Santos has a slight advantage. She is one inch taller than Valentina, being five foot six, while the bullet is five five. She also has a two inch reach advantage at 68 inches compared to Shevchenko's 66. We expect Shevchenko to outclass Santos in this category since she is known for her incredible Muay Thai style, so let's see whether the stats tell the same story. The first statistic is immediately surprising. Shevchenko lands a respectable 3.21 significant strikes per minute, but Santos surprisingly ousts her, landing 0.5 more strikes per minute at 3.71. The difference in the level of competition faced may contribute to that stat, but it's still surprising that the bullet statistics are inferior. In terms of striking accuracy, it's pretty close. Santos has an accuracy of 50% and Shevchenko's is 2% higher at 52. When it comes to striking defense, Valentina is superior, absorbing 1.87 significant strikes per minute, which is a lot lower than Santos's 2.23. However, the defense percentage is pretty similar. Shevchenko's is up at 64% and Santos only trails by 1% down at 63. Both fighters are not one-dimensional stand-up fighters, but their striking is at a very high level. I mean, she is literally a wrecking machine. When it comes to power, both women have proven that they have power throughout their career, but Santos hasn't translated to the UFC just yet. 10 of her 19 wins are by KOTKO, but none of her four UFC wins have come in that fashion. Shevchenko has less knockouts in total, having eight KOTKOs in 22 fights, but half of her knockouts have come in UFC title fights, so the difference in competition is massive. When it comes to grappling, both women are expected to have good statistics since both of them use grappling quite a lot in all their fights. In terms of their takedown average per 15 minutes, Shevchenko is ahead. She lands 2.62 takedowns every 15 minutes. Santos is a little bit lower at 2.44. However, Tyla's accuracy is a lot higher at 86% compared to Valentina's 64. Again, this could be down to the level of competition. The Brazilian also has the better takedown defense at 88%, 11% higher than Shevchenko's 77. Both statistics are respectable and very high compared to the average UFC fighter. In terms of submissions, Santos attempts a lot more of them at 1.1 per 15 minutes compared to Shevchenko's 0.3 who attempts almost four times less than Tyla. Shevchenko's finish rate is much higher though. She has seven fights via sub, the rear naked choke and the arm bar are her go-tos, while she also has an Ezekiel choke finish on her resume. Santos only has three wins by submission using the rear naked choke and the key lock. Prediction. Logic dictates to go with Shevchenko in this fight, given her track record and the level of competition she has beaten. I mean, just take a look at these names. Sarah Kaufman, Holly Holm, Juliana Pena, Joanna Yadzajek, Jessica Andraj, and a whopping five more title defenses. Most people argue she even beat Amanda Nunes in the rematch. While my opponent is trying to figure out what is the weakness of mine, don't waste your time, there is no one. Santos's level of competition is nowhere near that level. However, her wins have all come in impressive fashion. Statistically, it is very surprising that Tyler matches up to Valentina quite well. Their stats are very competitive and Santos has actually shown that her grappling might be superior based on her significantly higher takedown accuracy and defense. But again, the level of competition differs. Shevchenko will most likely want to keep the fight standing, but she has shown numerous times that she is not afraid to go to the ground with fighters who have good grappling and actually has success down there. Her striking is crisp and she definitely has knockout power. Her ground and pound is a thing of beauty, so Santos definitely does not want to end up on the bottom. On the other hand though, Santos doesn't have as vicious a ground and pound. She has had her opponents on the mat numerous times with lots of control time, but has been unable to finish them. She does have incredible cardio though. 
always coming on strong in the third round, but we haven't seen her in a five rounder in the UFC thus far. Shevchenko is very experienced in that department and we've almost never seen her tired at the end of a fight. Her striking technique is definitely superior, and if she can get on top, then it's going to be a long night for Santos. Tyla has shown prior to the UFC that she has power, but she has only been able to land knockdowns in the promotion so far, and we doubt that a bout against Shevchenko is going to change that. Shevchenko is a massive minus 800 favorite, while Santos is at a plus 500, which is the best odds a challenger has gotten apart from Jessica Andrade, like we mentioned in the intro. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Who would you guys put your money on? Drop your fight predictions in the comments below and make sure to like and subscribe to never miss an Athlete Central video. Until next time.